Glacier Peak sits alone, far from civilization, deep in the wilderness of Washington State. Isolated, this massive stratovolcano looms over the surrounding rugged landscape. Known to the native people of the Cascades as Dacobed, the volcano sits at over 3,200 meters high, supporting the numerous summit glaciers that give it its western name. Today, Glacier Peak remains one of the remaining outposts of wilderness in the lower 48, attracting many adventurers who seek the untouched forests and slopes of this sleeping giant. But with the isolation and lack of development that make Glacier Peak such an important wilderness resource, also make it a major threat to the civilization that lies beyond. Out of all the active Cascade volcanoes, Glacier is perhaps the least well monitored and studied. Only a single seismic station, installed in the 1960s, is operating on the mountain, offering a pinprick of light into the heart of the volcano that is only napping. We also know from the study of the geologic evidence of past eruptions that Glacier is a force to be reckoned with. Last erupting in around 1700, Glacier has shown consistent eruptions throughout the last 10,000 years, with ash deposits rivaling those of Mount St. Helens eruption in 1980. But the main threat from Glacier Peak is hiding in plain sight, the glaciers that sit atop this impressive peak. During an eruption, they could melt, sending torrents of water, ash, and debris down the river valleys that flank this mountain. These flows, known to geologists as lahars, can travel at highway speeds and have been mapped to reach the ocean in previous eruptions, many tens of kilometers away from the volcano itself. While few people live in the shadow of this volcano, especially compared to some of the other Cascade volcanoes. Those people that do are concentrated in the river valleys, right in the path of one of these natural bulldozers. Clearly, Glacier Peak poses a real threat, and without increased monitoring, a threat that could turn to destruction without warning. But increasing the monitoring on the volcano isn't just a technical question, but one that asks deeper questions about how to balance wilderness character with increasing demands to predict and manage a world that no longer accepts the unpredictability of natural disasters. Glacier Peak's elusive nature has been one that has extended through time and is a testament to how remote this area truly is. Only appearing on Western maps in 1898, the volcano has only been a feature of scientific research for little over a century. But what this century of research has revealed is that Glacier Peak is capable of producing some of the largest eruptions in the Cascades since the end of the last ice age. Tephrochronology, the dating of erupted material to determine when eruptions have occurred, has uncovered an active past, with four documented eruptions since the year zero, the most recent of which occurring only 300 years ago, circa 1700. But these recent eruptions are small compared to a significant event around 13,000 years ago when Glacier erupted nine series of tephra in under 100 years, the largest of which blanketed the western U.S., parts of Montana seeing over an inch of ash. The total erupted volume was determined to be over five times the amount of ash erupted by St. Helens in 1980. This series of eruptions also produced extensive lahars, choking the White Chuck, Suattle, and Sauk rivers before reaching the Stalamagush River, where lahar deposits of over two meters are present, almost 100 kilometers from the volcano. These flows eventually reach the ocean at Puget Sound, where the volcano isn't even visible on the horizon. While quiet on our human timescales, the geologic lens shows Glacier as a capable mountain, only now just asleep. So why don't we heed the geological records and install the monitoring networks present at many other volcanic sites? The best explanation for the under-monitoring of this volcano is that it is simply very isolated. This makes both any potential human impacts from the volcano erupting limited, especially compared to the much more populated areas around Rainier, Hood, and St. Helens. Compared to other Cascade volcanoes that sit in national forest land administered by the USDA, Glacier sits in wilderness-designated land that strictly limits the kinds of development that can take place. In wilderness-designated lands, the only development that is legally permitted is that which is deemed necessary to preserve the wilderness character of the area. 
This reading of wilderness law has been used by environmentalist groups such as Wilderness Watch to oppose construction of increased monitoring in the form of four new seismic stations. They extensively argue in a 2018 document that the USGS's proposals for four additional sites are much more intensive in terms of disturbance to the wilderness character than strictly necessary, and the plans to use helicopters to drop materials is prohibited in wilderness areas. Beyond the technical hurdles of operating monitoring equipment in such a remote setting, the legal difficulties of increasing monitoring are clear. What would a potential way to balance the intrinsic value of this wilderness area with monitoring of the volcano that could signal an eruption and save many lives look like? A potential idea would include some ground-based monitoring directed by remote sensing methods that seek to preserve the wilderness character to the greatest extent possible. Application of LIDAR, INSAR, and other satellite and aerial-based monitoring has recently expanded our ability to monitor the broad, long-term changes in volcanoes from ground deformation over time. Wilderness Watch also argues for the deployment of temporary ground-based seismic and GPS equipment that could allow for essential data to be collected with minimal disturbance to the wilderness area. Despite the advances in recent years in remote sensing, the data that seismic campaigns can gather that indicate the depth and nature of magma movement in real time is too vital in predicting a potential eruption to ignore. While long-term seismic and GPS data would scientifically be desirable, collection of this data requires equally long-term disruptions to the wilderness area containing it. But is this a workable solution that adequately meets the scientific and monitoring demands? Fortunately, we can look at how a seismic network is being deployed in a wilderness area on Mount Hood, another Cascade volcano, for some answers on how Glacier Peak may play out. Many of the arguments raised by Wilderness Watch are taken into consideration by the U.S. Forest Service in their Environmental Impact Study, a required report that assesses the impacts of a proposed development. What can this case study of installing seismic monitoring in a wilderness area show us? First, that there is really no alternative to permanent installations within five kilometers of the summit. Temporary installations would be limited to operating during the few summer months of June to October, as the heavy snow drifts would crush temporary equipment or make temporary networks impossible to install altogether. Additionally, the stations have to be close to the summit and therefore well within the wilderness area, as the earthquakes produced by magma that could signal an upcoming eruption are small and localized to this area. But what about getting these materials into the sites? Even though the use of aircraft is typically prohibited, in past cases and on Mount Hood, it appears the forest ranger can waive this regulation and allow for materials to be dropped, with the trips being designed to be as efficient as possible and with minimal disturbances. So, given the advancement of the Mount Hood project through this environmental review process, Installing a few key monitoring sites on the slopes of Glacier Peak would probably be accepted. While Glacier Peak certainly deserves more attention and monitoring, as a potentially massive volcanic eruption isn't out of the question, Doing so will require a sensitivity to wilderness areas not expressed when deploying the gold standard monitoring networks at other Cascade Range volcanoes. This certainly adds to the challenge of monitoring this volcano, but as seen at Mount Hood, the goals of the wilderness and volcano monitoring communities can be balanced through a targeted monitoring network. In treating Glacier Peak with heightened respect for what little truly wild areas remain on the planet, we start to ask important questions about why we monitor volcanoes and how to target this monitoring to balance our human concerns of life and property with the intrinsic value of wilderness and the importance of respecting the rules set up to protect it.